Hi, I'm Tyler London, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. It is about 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time here on Friday, January 19th, and another pretty decent day for the market. Um, you know, the first couple of weeks of the year, I think, have been marked by a little bit of second guessing uh, as far as investors go with respect to the pace and the magnitude of Fed rate cuts. Geopolitical risk, of course, has become an issue. Um, even more so uh, in the last couple of weeks. And then, again, a little second guessing when it comes to the pace of earnings growth in 2024. I think when we step back and we think about this, it's entirely reasonable to be having some questions given what's going on in the world and how far and how fast the market ran into the end of last year. But if, again, we step back, we look at the market. I mean, there's really nothing to complain about. The S&P 500 right near record highs, about flat as compared to where it was uh, at the end of last week. Um, if we go to the S&P 600 small cap index, a little bit more weakness here. Uh, banks, not great in small cap territory. Um, and then energy has been pretty weak as well. So there are a few more moving parts there. Of course, small cap index doesn't have the overweight tech that a large cap index has. Um, so that's a bit more of a headwind. Um, and speaking of text, of tech, uh, NASDAQ looking pretty solid. So to sum up the week, you know, it's been a bit choppy, but broad market has been insulated to the downside from strength in tech and uh, chip stocks. As far as the big stories, like I said, you know, rates have been in question uh, in terms of what the Fed is going to do. So market odds now are running uh, just above 50% that the Fed is going to cut uh, in the March meeting. If we look out to the end of the year, market is placing the highest probability of rates ending the year um, in the 3.75 to 4.25% range. So 67% probability that the federal funds rate will fall within that range um, at the end of the year. That's a little bit less than a month ago. Um, but again, keep in mind the current federal funds rate is 5.25 to 5.5. So the market's still looking for over 100 basis point in cuts by the end of the year. And we'll know more uh, a week from next Wednesday when the FOMC holds its first meeting of the year. Uh, of course, we are in earnings season. The tempo is picking up. There's going to be a lot more earnings reports over the coming weeks. A little bit of a wild card coming up uh, early in uh, February as far as the Fed and inflation goes. That's when the CPI seasonal adjustment uh, is going to be. Last year's seasonal revisions wiped out the gains that we thought we were making on CPI. So, you know, it's just one of those kind of, you know, things for inflation people that really follow this closely to, to kind of keep an eye on. But don't be surprised if we hear Fed Chair Powell and other Fed officials talking more about seasonal adjustments and CPI in the coming weeks. Um, as far as earnings season, I think the last couple of days, it's really been a lot about chips, uh, chip stocks. So if we look at the SMH, um, the Vanex Semiconductor ETF, again, chip stocks doing phenomenally. This is after uh, Thursday's move in Taiwan Semi, so TSM, which is the largest contract chip maker out there. Company beat expectations and the stock's upside move along with rallies and other chip stocks helped to put push the... Uh, semiconductor index up to another another record high definitely trading at a cheap at a uh, sorry not cheap but rich valuation when it comes to chip stocks but um you know they're clearly in favor here's a look at taiwan semi uh as you can see 52 week high and, and looking relatively strong again today just backing up again to economic data over the last week uh, nothing like really major in terms of outliers. Recent unemployment claims show labor market remains tight. Unemployment is probably still below 4%. Some of the regional business surveys lately out of New York and Philadelphia a bit weak. Kind of lumpy, volatile series. So nothing the market is too worried about. Uh, retail sales is still strong. December was up uh, six tenths of a percent over November. And that was while CPI for goods was up one tenth of a percent. Uh, another good news for just the average consumer, average person, mortgage rates back down to the lowest level in eight months at about 6.3%. So that's pretty good. 
Um, industrial production is up, especially for defense and space. Of course, we can thank Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the war in Gaza for that. Uh, Reuters was out reporting this morning that NATO is set to conduct its biggest war drill since the Cold War with 90,000 troops. So that's not super. Um, I think, you know, if we step back in terms of what we're doing uh, in my two publications, Small Cap Confidential and Early Opportunities, uh, I've been focused mostly on software, medical technology, and of course, a lot of the stocks, the big IT stocks that have exposure to AI, uh, cybersecurity, IT infrastructure, that kind of thing, with a little bit of attention to biotech. I just added a biotech stock to Cabot Early Opportunities. Uh, so if you have interest in checking out those two publications, I'll have a slide at the end of the presentation today uh, that you can you can follow to our website. Um, I think let's move on and look at some individual stocks here. I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. Uh, again, looking at chip names. So we have Marvell Tech here, uh, MRVL market cap of almost 60 billion, looking pretty good. Advanced Micro, AMD, market cap of about 270 billion. Again, another chip stock looking good. And then Broadcom uh, or Avago, depending, you know, on uh, on what your history with the stock is, ticker symbol AVGO, about 550 billion. So of course these are large cap uh, or mega cap chip stocks. And then a smaller one here is Rambus, ticker symbol RMBS, 7.6 billion market cap there. Also looking pretty decent. If we move over to retail, as I mentioned, retail sales in December looked pretty good. Not all retail stocks look great, but some of the best looking ones here for a while. Uh, Decorous has been leading. Uh, ticker symbol is DECK, 19 billion. Hard not to like that performance. And then Abercrombie and Fitch, bit smaller, uh, just under 5 billion market cap. I mean, that's a beautiful chart. Uh, ticker symbol there is ANF. And then Urban Outfitters is another one, smaller, uh, small cap, 3.6 billion market cap there for. Uh, Urban Outfitters. And then recent IPO Birkenstock, bit of a volatile chart as to be expected. It's a recent IPO and they uh, reported a couple of days ago. Generally pretty good results, um, but some margin pressure just due to inflation. Uh, they're going to be hiking prices on some of their things. So that's something to watch about it. You know, we don't typically want to jump into an IPO. Uh, anyway, until they are past their lockup expiration would kind of be the signal to maybe start thinking about it. Um, but it's always interesting to follow some of these newer names. I uh, mentioned defense. Uh, so it's kind of a bull market for a lot of defense stocks. Here we have uh, Cayman. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Uh, 1.27 billion market cap today. And that is after the stock is up 100% on takeover. Uh, I think it's take private news, um, obviously late to get into this name, uh, but just an indication of some of the interest that's out there. And also just because of the strength in uh, spending other defense stocks like Transdigum, Transdigum, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, ticker symbol is TDG. So larger company here, 58 billion market cap. Curtis Wright, another well-known name, uh, mid-cap, 8.5 billion. CW is the market cap. Smaller name here is Leonardo DRS, uh, just under 5 billion. This company is kind of interesting. They're, they've been doing some work with um, electrical propulsion for, um, I think it is GE's uh, electric boat project. Um, so that's Leonardo. Uh, it might not be for GE, uh, but um, for the electric boats, le electric submarines out there, nuclear grade submarines. Uh, so that's Leonardo DRS. TAT Technologies is another one, T-A-T-T, -T, uh, getting down into the micro cap sphere here. So 100 billion market cap, I'm sorry, 100 million market cap right now. So clearly more speculative, but again, it just kind of look at the chart here and it speaks to the interest across the spectrum from very large to very small uh, in defense stocks. Another smaller speculative name here, 113 million market cap. This is Mtron Industries, ticker symbol MPTI. 
And lastly, just looking around a little bit uh, at technology, sort of mega cap to some smaller names. Of course, this has been one of the things that, one of the areas that has helped the market do well. So Alphabet, uh, Google, looking pretty solid. Uh, GitLab is another name, uh, a little bit smaller, 10 billion market cap, GTLB. We, my, both Mike and I talk about this one relatively frequently. Uh, doing well this week after news that they're gonna be hiking prices on some of their newer products. Also Elastic looking good. Uh, ESTC just kind of pushing above that 118 level that came after the earnings report at the beginning of December. Kind of interesting to see that if you can get 120 or higher. Uh, there's a lot of space up there. And Nutanix is another one, NTNX. Looking a bit stretched, but again, just kind of speaks to this strength in IT infrastructure, sort of like exposure to uh, hyperconvergence market, uh, AI, you know, just managing workloads. All these types of technologies seem to be uh, in pretty high demand right now. And uh, SMCI, the last one here for this week, uh, pre announced yesterday. Uh, with upside guidance to its most recent quarter, which ended in December. It's not the official report, but like I said, the pre-release uh, notes. So that stock is up 30% today. So um, a lot going on out there. Action is going to pick up, of course, in the coming weeks. And the week after next, as I said, uh, on Wednesday is the upcoming FOMC meeting. So that's going to be interesting. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you have a nice weekend. And we'll be back in touch next Friday. Take care.